Hey everyone, and welcome to Real Flight 9.5, freshly released on October 1st here. I just downloaded it, so let's go ahead and uh, get it started. Uh, for those of you who are going to comment about the video quality, I guess I'll start right now by uh, saying that this is actually filmed um, from my TV screen using my iPhone. So the quality of the, the video is far better on my television screen than it is what you are seeing here on, uh, on YouTube. And also I'm using kind of a crap video card. So um, your real results that you're gonna see on your own computer or your own TV screen are gonna be far better than, than what you're seeing here on, uh, on YouTube. I get a lot of comments about that. So while we wait for this to load up, I thought I would cover that. Now downloading, if you got RealFlight 9.0, which I did, uh, going into the uh, 9.5 is relatively easy. It prompts you at the very beginning, do you want to, uh, uh, there's a little little icon there that says, you know, this is the update for 9.5. You click it, a few minutes later, uh, the download is complete. You start up uh, 9.5 and you are good to go. And I'll tell you what, I am super geeked over, well, let's try that again with the gear down, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I am super geeked about the uh, the new E-Flight 1.5 meter P-51. It's one of my all-time uh, favorite airplanes of E-Flight, one that I continually lust after and someday I'll have to buy. But if you love E-Flight planes, let me just go in here and take a look. Let's go to select aircraft and let's just, let's just take a look, shall we? Look at all these E-Flight airplanes that are now in here. There is just loaded up with E-Flight models. So. A couple that I am most interested in, uh, of course, the P-51, the new 64 millimeter uh, EDF A-10 Thunderbolt is in here. I'm really excited about this one. Love the A-10. I got the UMX A-10, so I'm excited to fly the uh, the 64 millimeter version. This thing is just gorgeous. Uh, I would, I am geeked about this one. Of course, uh, the Apprentice is in here, including. Uh, let's see, we have. Uh, I think this is the new version right here. It's a little slow to load um, some of these new planes that I have not clicked on yet before. So there we got the Apprentice, just an absolute classic trainer. Um, another one that I'm excited about, they added the Cirrus. Unfortunately, the Cherokee is not in here. Everybody knows that the Cherokee is another one of my favorites, but the Cirrus is in here. So I'm excited to fly this one and kind of compare and contrast it against my uh, my Cherokees. Of course, the, uh, the EC-1500 is in here. And if you remember from about a year ago, the, uh, the EC-1500 in Real Flight 9 is what sold me on the airplane. And I'll tell you what, it flies as awesome in real life as it does in the simulator, and it is so much fun. So uh, that's just an old favorite that's in here. Nothing new there. I'll take a look at this. Uh, let's just kind of scroll through here. I think this is the new uh, the new F-16 is down here. Like I said, it's a little, it's a little slow um, for the first time selecting on the aircraft. Um, but as I start to fly more of them, they'll, they'll load up a little bit quicker here. So, uh, like I said, we got a, quite a bit of aircraft in here. The new Habu uh, STS is in here. Pretty geeked about that as well. Um, the thing about the, uh, the new Habu STS is it is a trainer that's an EDF, which is great when you got the, you got people who don't want to fly a uh, high-wing trainer. They think they look dumb and they want to fly an EDF. Uh, this is probably a great starting point. So if you're uh, you're new to RC flying and uh, the EDF is where you want to fly and you don't really care about high wing prop planes, um, the new Habu SDS is in here and you can fly it in Real Flight 9.5 and get get some good uh, time on the sticks before uh, purchasing the airplane. A couple of other ones that are in here that I thought were pretty cool. The uh, the night timber is in here and of course there are flying environments that are at night. So that should be pretty cool. Uh, night flying is really starting to take off in our club. Or mostly because of the fact that the winds are calm and the air traffic is down and we have a lot more um, time to fly in the evenings and uh, just after sunset. So uh, night flying is gaining in popularity, which is awesome. And this is gonna give me a chance to fly a night plane um, from the comfort of my living room. And my favorite, the 1.5 meter P-51. Uh, the Hangar 9 P-51 is, one, is kind of my previous favorite from Real Flight uh, in terms of the P-51s, but yeah, I, I really like the foamy uh, 1.5 meter a lot. So really excited about having this airplane in here. In fact, that's actually the one I'm going to demo uh, tonight. I'll actually demo that 
And I'm gonna demo one that I have um, in my hanger as well, and that's gonna be the Twin Otter. One of my all-time uh, favorite E-Flight planes that I, when it came out, I'm like, eh, it's kinda cool, it's a, you know, little commuter plane, big deal. And then I flew it and I go, wow, this thing is a lot of fun. So I'm excited that it's in the simulator as well. So I'm gonna to try to test this one out too and kinda of see how it compares to the uh, the one that I have in my garage because I really do enjoy flying my Twin Otter. It is a fantastic airplane. Uh, scrolling down here a little bit, they also have the new V-22 Osprey. It's been out for a little while now, maybe a year or so. I think it's about a little over a year. I'm really excited about the V-22 Osprey to try to fly this one. Um, I'm not the best at helicopters and quads, uh, but I do want to try the V-22. I think the V-22 is just such an awesome airplane anyway that this would give me an opportunity to, uh, to try it out here. But without any further uh, ado, let's go ahead and uh, let's crank up the plane that I've been most excited about, and that is the, um, the P-51 Mustang. So we'll just do a flap check here. Yep, flaps work. We already know the gear works since I accidentally loaded it up with the, uh, the gear retracted. Do a little control surface check here. It's always good to do that, um, you know, just as kind of a get yourself in the habit here. So this is the first time I've flown the uh, the 1.5 meter uh, P-51 flying off grass. So we're gonna give full up elevator. We're just gonna roll on the, uh, the power. Look at that awesome four bladed prop spinning with the yellow tips. Here we go. Gently cruise on the power, add a little right. There we go, whoa, this thing actually takes off. Pretty cool, oh man, and there's the, it's got the sequence gear doors and everything on it. It actually takes off pretty easily. Um, kind of kind of surprised how easy, all right. So apparently I had a setting on here that was limiting my bank, so uh, sorry about that. Um, I think the last time uh, Real Flight 9 was cranked up, I actually had uh, my nephew flying uh, in preparation for his first uh, flight instruction session. So I think I had safe turn down there and that's why it was not turning uh, as responsive as I would have thought. So let's come down here on a, on a fast pass here. Woo! <laughs> oh man, this is cool. I tell you, there's, if there's ever a problem with Real Flight 9.5, is, is it gives you a chance to fly airplanes that you don't have in your hangar. And then you decide you have to go have them in your hangar because they are so much fun. And I think the 1.5 meter Mustang is one of those again. I have loved this thing since the day it, uh, it came out. Uh, unfortunately, I was in the process of building my 1.2 meter Detroit Miss Mustang when this came out. And I just bought a P-51. And, and I just couldn't justify another one at the time. But man, does this thing fly nice. Uh, I was able to see a nice demo of it um, this, uh, this summer. Uh, Mike Klein from a local club came in and brought his in. And I tell you what, he knows how to ring out a P-51 Mustang and he put on one heck of an awesome show with it. So let's come in here and do another pass and then I'll set up for a landing and we'll go switch over to the, uh, the Twin Otter. But, Tell you right now, I am already loving uh, the update on here on 9.5. It's got the P51 Mustang in it, and that alone is worth it. Come in nice and low, pull up, nice aileron roll. Oh man, this thing is cool. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, um, you see, I got the little binocular window on to make it easier for you guys to see at home too. You know, I know the the, the blue uh, paint scheme is not. Um, considered historically correct for the one that flew in the war. It is used on the simula on the, uh, the restored airplanes, but it really looks beautiful in person and it does look very cool in the simulator as well. So yeah, I get it, it's not historically correct, but man, it, look at that. That looks cool. That yellow nose of the uh, 361st fighter group, the Lou 4 markings on it, that beautiful blue paint, it's a gorgeous airplane drop tanks, sequence gear doors, it's got the rear retract on it. Yeah, it's totally cool. It, it's, uh, this, thing, this is getting a little dangerous because I could, uh, <laughs> I could see adding one of these into my cart here really soon. This is just an absolutely beautiful airplane. All right, let's just go ahead and uh, bring it in. I'm a little rusty on the sticks. Uh, I haven't flown in a while here. Uh, the fall weather is not really allowed for much flying. Oh, but you know what? That, that landing wasn't too bad. Up on the elevator, come to a stop. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful airplane. 
All right, so let's go ahead and uh, crank up the uh, the twin otter here, uh, just because um, that's one I have in the in the uh, in the garage, one that I really really enjoy flying, and I'm anxious to try it out here in real flight to see how it compares. Uh, this is a really a fun airplane if you want to fly scale, and as uh, one of my club members has it as well, he likes to do a little light aerobatics with it, but I keep telling him that the uh, the passengers do not appreciate that. But you know what? Uh, you can have as much fun as you want in these things. You don't not you do not have to fly at scale. Here we go. Power up. Look at that. Yeah, the the, the twin otter really surprised me uh, as far as an RC plane. It's when I first saw it, I'm like, yeah, whatever. And when I tell you, when I flew the first one that uh, my club member uh, friend had, I really I did the maiden on it for him, and I fell in love with the plane so quickly. It wants to be flown scale. It's got plenty of power. It flies on 2200 uh, 3S's, which um, I have an absolute mountain of those things. And it's just a nice flying airplane. I love to fly it more at dusk when you can see the, uh, the navigation lights and landing lights on it. Uh, really a cool airplane. On floats, which what's great about Real Flight 9.5, you actually have uh, the option of floats on the, uh, the Twin Otter. And I think on floats, it's perhaps even better and I would say it's the best float plane I have ever flown in my life. All right, this one's for you, Steve. I'm gonna warn the passengers, we're gonna do an aileron roll. There we go, he, he seems to do those all the time with his. Let's do a, do a loop. Actually, we'll just do a uh, Cuban 8 instead and bring it back around. But yeah, the, the airplane flies very similar to uh, the one that I have hanging up in my hangar. Um, I'm not really seeing too much of a difference. I noticed that if anything, it appears that the uh, the nose drops maybe a little bit, so I've got to keep a little bit more up elevator than I do in real life here, but um, I'll play with that a little bit later. But yeah, just a good, easy flying airplane. Uh, what's great about this being in the simulator is you can work on your landings. And if you've heard any of my uh, videos on the, uh, the Twin Otter, I like to point out that you need to be proficient with your landings. You need to land on the mains and let the nose settle down if you're flying from a rough field at all. Uh, if you're flying from grass, you do not want to land on the uh, on the nose gear, and that's really true of any tricycle uh, landing gear airplane. Uh, you want to protect that nose gear and nose gear servo. So uh, let's go ahead and do one notch of flaps here. Start bringing it around. Turn base, power down, turn final, full flaps. Yeah, the, the twin otter. It's it's pretty cool. There's no doubt about it. Here we go, bring it on in, power down, boop. Well, a little bit of a three-point landing there. I didn't really keep the uh, the nose gear up in the air. But you know what? Um, yeah, I would say this flies very similar to uh, the one in my garage. So one last test here, the V-22 Osprey. I'm gonna give this a shot just because um, really love the V-22 Osprey and I have never flown them before. So uh, I am, quite terrible at quads and helicopters, so let's go ahead and, and try this and just see how it goes, and then we'll just wrap this up, all right? So I did have a question earlier if the SU-30 Sukhoi is available in the in the sim, and I don't believe it is. I did not see that in here, so let's uh, get the V-22 up here. I did want to respond to that I was asked earlier. Oh, we're up, we're up, okay. Here we go. Flying in helicopter mode. The rudder input, turn around. This is, it actually isn't too bad. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I, like I said, I am terrible at quads and helicopters. My brain just doesn't seem to work with those. But I'm doing all right here with the V-22 Osprey. Such a cool airplane anyway. I mean, I guess you can call it an airplane or a helicopter. Let's go ahead and uh, switch it into airplane mode. Wow, it is. <laughs> She's kind of quick. So I'm in, uh, I guess, uh, aerobatic mode. Uh, oh, it's quick. It's very cool. Look at this thing. How awesome is that? So yeah, lots of really great updates here in the uh, version 9.5 of Real Flight 9. I am definitely gonna be spending a lot of more time with it. Uh, of course, the flying season is about done. It is October here in Michigan. So flying season's coming to an end. So that means it's simulator season, so. I have a feeling I will be spending a lot of time 
with this. Let's uh, put it up into uh, helicopter mode and bring it around back, shall we? And then we'll go ahead and call this one done. If you guys got any questions on Real Flight 9, by all means, uh, feel free to ask. I'll answer as many as I can. There's a lot more features in Real Flight 9 than we covered uh, tonight. Obviously, I just want to cover a lot of the aircraft uh, to start with and kind of try out a few that I was most excited about. But as you can see, there's a lot of new aircraft in here. I believe there's a number of new flying environments. Um, overall, extremely happy. Love how simple it was to, um, to update the, uh, the software. Everything worked remarkably well. I usually hate doing updates, but this one was not a problem at all. So it's also available in the full version, um, you know, directly from, whoop, that was a poor landing, but uh, it's, it's a sim, so that's what we get to do. Uh, if you don't have version 9, you want to go right to 9.5. It's available from, uh, from Horizon Hobby, and you can get it with the, uh, the Intralink um, controller as well. So we got a couple options out there. Since I had 9.0, mine was just a simple download, and I am updated. So with that, I'm going to call this one done, and if you guys got any questions, leave them below, and I'm going to get back to flying this uh, V-22 Osprey.